Good afternoon. My name is Barb Malera. I'm a member of the team at Harvesting History. Harvesting History is an heirloom horticultural company that specializes in heirloom seeds, heirloom flower bulbs, heirloom roots and sets, and then vintage design classic gardening tools. Today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite summer fruits, and that is the tomatillos and the ground cherries. Today we are going to show you an absolutely beautiful example of a tomatillo purple plant. Now, tomatillos and ground cherries are known as husk fruits because they grow, the fruit itself grows inside of a paper thin husk. This is a beautiful example of a green tomatillo known as Tomatillo Toma Verde. The tomatillo family as well as, well no, not necessarily the ground cherry family, the tomatillo family is indigenous to Central and Northern South America and then in some cases the southernmost points of Central and Western United States, continental United States. Like I said, this is a beautiful example of the tomatillo toma verde. Now, by husk fruit, we mean that the actual fruit of the tomatillo grows inside this paper thin husk. And when the plant is ready to be harvested, the fruit itself bursts through the husk. And then you know it's time to take it off of the plant. Now, to give you an idea, this our crop this year is spectacular. This is a very, very large tomatillo. This is more the average size of a tomatillo before it, it uh, breaks through the husk. If you are planning to plant your tomatillos or your ground cherries in a pot, we have another video on YouTube which explicitly explains how to do that. For now, we're talking about planting your tomatillos and your ground cherries right in the ground. So here we have a seedling. And what we're going to do is dust the hole and the bottom of the hole with about a quarter to a half a cup of bone meal. You can mix it around if you want. You do not have to do that. Then you're going to take and put your seedling in the hole. You want to bury the seedling up to the major leaves. So this leaf down here we're just going to take off. We're going to take this one off. It's better to pinch than it is to cut. And then what we do is we bury the seedling like that. If you want, you can sprinkle a tiny bit more, just a dusting of the bone meal. Bone meal has calcium in it, and as you'll learn from the other video, calcium is a preventative for blossom end rot. Blossom end rot on both tomatoes and on the husk fruits happens when the fruit itself turns brown at the blossom end and then eventually rots. It's a very simple ailment to fix because all you need to do is take about a half a cup of bone meal sprinkle it around your plant and in about five to seven days the new fruit will not have the brown spots that the blossom end rot has caused on the current fruit. We showed you just a few seconds ago how to plant the seedling. A week after you plant that seedling you begin your regimen of fertilizing. And you begin it with a product 
like this Espoma tomato tone. I happen to love this product. And all you do, it doesn't get any easier, is you take about a half, a quarter to a half a cup, and you sprinkle it out about six inches from the stem. And then you just water it in. But six inches from the stem, all, all the way around. Now, I need to tell you that a lot of our customers have homes in and gardens in very rural areas of the United States. And they can't get tomatillo or ground cherry seedlings. So what they have to do and what you may have to do is buy the seeds and plant the seeds and start your own seedlings. At Harvesting History, we offer three different kinds of husk fruit. We offer the ground cherry, which I haven't shown you yet. We also offer the green tomatillo, which is known as tomatillo toma verde. And then we offer the purple tomatillo, which is a beautiful fruit. The difference, because I often get asked between these two, is that for someone who has a discriminating palate, that would not be me. But someone who has a discriminating palate, they will set, tell you that the purples are slightly sweeter than the greens. All right, we've shown you the seedling, and then we showed you a more mature plant where we have been diligently fertilizing. We talked to you about the tomato tone. Week one, you use the tomato tone. Week two after planting you go back to the bone meal and again you do about a quarter to a half a cup dusting around the stem approximately six inches out from the stem and then so now we're in the second week the third week you alternate back to the tomato tone. The fourth week you go back to the bone meal. After you have done three applications of bone meal, you don't need to continue that unless you do get the um, blossom end rot. But you need to continue to fertilize your tomatillos until late in the fruiting season. So you will continue every other week to apply about a quarter to a half a cup of the tomato tone. One other thing I should add is you really need to grow at least two, no, let me rephrase that, no more than two tomatillos. These plants, as you can see here, this plant is well on its way to 100 fruit. By the time the season ends, this particular plant will have produced at least 200 fruit. That's how plentiful and prolific they are. If you do not plant two plants, they, that will significantly compromise your productivity. So think about that and try to plan for two plants. It can be two greens, two purples, or one of each, but two plants is what will do the trick. I want to make sure that you understand what blossom end rot is, and I need to tell you, uh, I'm not a bit sorry that so far this year we haven't been plagued with blossom end rot, so I can't show you a, um, an example of it. But I can tell you that what happens with blossom end rot, this is the blossom end of the fruit. And it will begin to turn brown and it will spread, the brown will spread around the base of the fruit and then up the sides. You cannot or should not eat a fruit that has blossom end rot, only because it's rotting and that would be kind of nasty. So once you see the browning, that's when you need to add the bone meal because blossom end rot is a calcium deficiency. 
and it can be easily cured in five to seven days with an application of about a half a cup of bone meal. In this video, I want to leave you with this memory of these beautiful, these are an exceptional example of tomatillos. Every plant will produce some tomatillos this size, but look at this, this is one, two, three, and there's a whole bunch more on the other side. So if you take good care of these plants, they will more than amply reward you. These are beautifully sized tomatillos. I hope you have enjoyed and learned something from this video. Harvesting History, as I told you, is a horticultural company. Our website is www.harvesting-history.com. We have the seeds for these tomatillos and also for the ground cherry, as I explained earlier in the video. This is the ground cherry. This is tomatillo toma verde, the green tomatillo. And this is tomatillo purple. We have these seeds available all year long. We also have a fertilizer section. And if you can't obtain these fertilizers in your own local community, then please come to our website and you can purchase these fertilizers there. So once again, you'll see it at the bottom of our image. The website is www.harvesting-history.com. And also visit our YouTube channel because we have over a hundred how-to videos when it comes to fruit, vegetable, flower, and herb gardening, and many, many videos on gardening in containers. Good luck with your garden. We wish you the best. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends our channel. On the left side of your screen, there is our most recent video. And on the right side of your screen is one of our playlists. We are Harvesting History, Seeding the Future.